Yo guys, in this video, you will learn how to add 3D objects or 3D models or any kind of animation into real life footage, sort of like I did in the intro. I divided the process into three main steps. 3D tracking your footage in After Effects, adding 3D CGI in Cinema 4D, and last but not least, compositing the 3D elements in After Effects. Let's get started. Launch After Effects. We're going to make a new project, obviously. Right click, import. I have mine right here, so I'm just going to click it and import it. Then you're going to want to make a composition from the clip by dragging it straight to this little box right here. I'm going to change my view from 50 to fit just so I can see my footage here. From here, you're going to want to go over to your right, select tracker and click track camera. If you don't have that, just go to window, workspace and select all panels. Click track camera, go to your advanced and select detailed analysis. Tracking the camera basically replicates every single movement in the real camera onto a digital in software camera. Cool stuff. So in order to achieve a good track, you want to make sure that in your shot you have cracks or good, good contrast points like the wheel or these yellow spots on the gray concrete, maybe even leaves, posters on the wall, light poles, and all that stuff really helps. This is why on big sets you see a bunch of X's on green screens and blue screens. It is all so you can get a good track in post-production. And just like that, our camera is solved. If you increase your track point size, you'll be able to see a better representation of your track. These are all the track points I was talking about that really help map out those camera movements. If we play back on our footage, we can see we have track points all throughout our shot. You want to pick a spot where you're going to want your 3D model to be. So in this case, I want it to be somewhere, somewhere right here in this area. So what I want to do is make a circle around it and make sure you have track points selected. Then you're going to want to right click and select create solid and camera. This will create this square right here that will serve as a reference point in Cinema 4D as to where we want our 3D model or animation to be. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. Click on your solid, select C and scale it up just a bit. Also, I'm going to fix the rotation. And just like that, we have a good marker that represents where our 3D model is going to be in Cinema 4D. From here, we want to save our project. Save as. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm just going to name it VFX. Change the name and click Save. Now we're going to go back up to File. Select Export. Max on Cinema 4D Exporter. It will give you this little warning. Just say that's fine. And we are going to save our new Cinema 4D file as Track Data. Save. And we are moving on to step number two. Close After Effects. And we are going to open up our file that we just created. Once we are in Cinema 4D, you can see here that we have our reference point and our camera movement mapped out. Pretty cool. Next, what we want to do is make sure we see our footage here. To do that, you want to go up to Floor, click and hold and select Background. Now we're going to go up to Create New Material, double click it. And you're going to want to select your footage and put it inside the Texture tab. Navigate and find our footage. It's this clip right here. Open it. Click yes. Then we are going to go into editor and check animate preview. We're going to close this window and drag and drop this texture onto our background object. And just like that, we have our video here. The viewport in Cinema 4D can be a little slow, but as you can see, we have our After Effects reference point and our footage in the background. Okay, from here, we want to import our 3D model. But before that, you want to take a look here at your After Effects generated folder. Open it and you want to grab your track solid and your 3D camera and drag it out of that folder and delete that folder. I just do that so I can see what I'm working with. We have our track solid, which is our marker we made in After Effects. We have our 3D camera, which is a camera that moves in 3D space. And we have our background object, which is a video that plays in the background. So in order to bring a 3D model in, we're going to go to File, Merge, and you're going to find your file. Mine is right here. It's water I made for this specific tutorial. Check it, open it, and just like that, you, you see it right here. It's not in the right place, but we're about to fix that. I'm going to open up our four views by clicking here. Zoom out of the top view. Find my marker, which is this one. Now 
and I'm going to move my 3D model by clicking on it, making sure my move tool is selected and dragging it on top of that marker. Just like that. We're going to go back to our main view and you can see that my 3D model is a little bit too big. So I'm going to click it, go to coordinates and decrease that size to about 15 all across. And that looks a lot better, but I'm still going to center it and bring it down a little bit. So I just click and drag it to about right there. Once it's in the position you want, you can rotate it to however your heart desires. I think it's fine right about there. Next, we are going to fire up Octane by clicking this button. And as you can see, we are a little bit too zoomed in. So I'm just going to click this lock right here and decrease the number one so we can see our full frame. And there we go. There's our liquid, our marker, and not our environment just yet. All right, so from here, we got to match this environment lighting to our render lighting. So how do we do that? We have two options. We can either go to hdriheaven.com which is right here. It's a library of 360 degrees spherical pictures that replicate environment lighting in any situation. Or we can even use this image right here, which is our background to light our subject. And how do we do that? Simple. We just go back to our project in After Effects and you're going to want to choose a frame that shows a general picture of your environment. And I think um, this one's good. All I'm going to do is hide that green box click my video, go to composition, go to save frame as file. And we're going to choose where we want to save that. I'm just going to name it frame. Check save under output module. I'm going to change it to PNG. Hit OK and render. Now we're going to go back into Cinema 4D and we're going to go into objects and select HDRI environment. And our render went away because we currently don't have any lighting, but we have an environment. To add lighting to it, all we're going to do is Make sure you have your Octane Sky selected, this little button right here. Go into Texture and find that image we just rendered. Mine is right here. I'm going to open it. And as you can see, our image is loaded up in the environment of our render. All we got to do is position it by moving the sliders. I'm going to line the street right there in the middle. And bring it up a little bit. And that's about right, right there. If you were doing this commercially or professionally, you would probably want to get a 360 camera and shoot a high dynamic range image of your whole environment so you can replicate the exact lighting of your set. But obviously I didn't do that. So I'm just going to use this image to light my render. As you can see, our background went away because we added an environment to make it show back up. All we got to do is check this little light bulb right here twice till it turns red. And just like that, we have our background back in the viewport and we are actually almost done. All that's left to do is go to your 3D camera, check it, right click it and add an Octane camera tag to it because we are rendering with Octane. From here, we want to give it motion blur so it could be a little bit more believable. So under your Octane camera tag, click it, go to motion blur and select enable. I'm going to set my shutter to point. 03 that gives me pretty realistic motion blur sort of like 1 50th of a shutter speed within the camera and obviously we don't want this green box in our render so what we're gonna do we're gonna make this our shadow catcher which all it is it's a plane that catches the shadows being casted by your 3d object to do that all i gotta do is go to materials and make a new octane diffuse material drag and drop it into our solid and delete our previous texture, this green tag right here. Now we are going to open up our Octane Diffuse material, go into Common and select Shadow Catcher. And just like that, our green box went away and this turned into a Shadow Catcher. To make sure all the shadows are being catched correctly, I'm going to make this square a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on it, go to my Scale tool, drag and hold and make it big enough. Just like that, that should be able to catch all these shadows that are being casted by this box right here. Once you're on the step, your image is almost practically ready for rendering. In this stage of the process, you mean you want to check that everything is working, that your animation is playing or your object is spinning if you want it to spin, obviously. Or maybe you have a mix and more animation in here of a guy dancing or something. As you can see, playing back on our timeline here is a little slow. So one quick tip to get accurate playback, you can go up here into render settings, select hardware OpenGL, uncheck save, and you want to make sure 
here that under output all of your frames are selected we're going to do a quick render of our viewport which is this window right here there's no accurate lighting or any fancy materials this is strictly so we can see our playback in real time once that's done click this it's just telling us that we're not saving our file just hit yes all right once that render is done you can save that little file save as select animation change it from tiff to mp4 hit ok select your folder and that name is fine okay once your video is finished saving find it in your finder mine is right here double click it and you get a good representation in real time of what your animation will look like and that looks great to me remember this little black box is going to be our shadow catcher and this will have actual texture all right so i'm just going to close that all right the last few steps go to your octane settings I usually render in path tracing, lower your samples, 500 should be fine, Diff diffuse, let's lower that to half, also my specular is going to be half, and my GA clamp is going to be set to 1. I'm going to scroll down right here, and since we don't want this particular environment, we just want our 3D model, we're going to select alpha channel and deselect keep environment, and you see here our shadows are showing up properly without getting cut off. So we're going to close that go into our project settings here you want to make sure that your frame rate set correctly to what you shot your footage at which i shot this video at 24 fps also my after effects composition is also set to 24 fps we can check that by going into composition composition settings and you can see here that's 24. next we're going to select all frames because we're rendering the entire sequence our renderer we're going to choose octane go to our safe box and say where you want your sequence to be i'm gonna make a new folder and name it frames i'm gonna click on it and my frames are gonna be called frames again and hit save last but not least we gotta check our alpha channel and we're ready to go close that make sure i save my project just in case we're gonna hit render this little box right here and here we are our sequence is getting rendered out in octane i'm gonna let that finish and come back all right guys once your sequence is done you're going to want to go back into After Effects and right click here, select Import, select File and navigate to where you saved your frames. Mine's are right here. I'm going to select the first frame. Make sure TIFF sequence is selected and select Import. It's going to give you this little warning. It's just basically telling me that my images are without a background. Do I want to leave them like that or not? Yes, I do. Now, this is a very important step right click your image sequence go down to interpret footage and main and by default after effects has it at 30 frames per second if you remember correctly our sequence is 24 frames per second so we're just going to change that to 24 and select ok from here we're going to drag and drop our images onto our timeline just like that and as you can see we have our cgi on our footage now to really sell this effect we have to add imperfections to our footage. So how do we do this? I usually just go down to my effects and add a little bit of grain. So like that grain, drag it into our sequence, change viewing mode from preview to final output. After I added this grain, I'm basically just making a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to throw a little LUT into it by going into effect color correction and lumetri color then i'm going to go into my creative and import a lot i have this orange and teal i know it's a little bit overplayed but i still like it and just like that we have our cgi blending with our background just a little bit more all right so cool just like that you have your little animation and if you look closely whenever the camera moves you get some motion blur to match with the motion blur inside the footage this is why we change the shutter speed on our camera in octane also if you look closely you see yellow artifacts on your water from the hdri map we created and just like that you have a believable animation after you're finished with your animation it is crucial that you add sound design just because it makes it so much cooler so much more believable remember that audio is about 80 percent of your video if that makes sense so that's it for this tutorial guys let me know what you want to learn next I'm planning on doing some tutorials on how to make this water cube, on how to make wind running through trees, and um, leave a comment on what you want to learn, and I'll get to it. Thank you guys for watching. Please consider subscribing.